A lot of people tend to forget, with all the hype around the Mini Ice Age, that one of the causes of the Mini Ice Age is the solar minimum. Now the crazy thing about this is that when the sun is quieter, it produces fewer flares, but the flares that it produces are far more energetic. Now a good analogy for this is a saucepan full of water. If you boil it on a very low heat so that it's boiling slowly, then you get large chunks of water ejected because the bubbles have much more time to form and they're therefore actually somewhat larger. If you boil it on a higher heat, then you get more drops coming out, but they're much, much smaller. And essentially this is what happens with the sun. Now like any other natural process, the sun has waste products. And it gets rid of these normally, when it's working normally, all the time. And these waste products are in the form of charged particles that come streaming off the sun's surface, and we call this the solar wind. Now, when the sun's activity goes right the way down, this solar wind goes almost to a standstill. And this is because there is not enough energy in the surface of the sun to push these particles outwards. So what happens is they collect in big pockets underneath the actual surface of the sun that we can see and they burst out as big bubbles and they will often carry some of the sun's outer layers with them and we call this a coronal mass ejection. Now coronal mass ejections happen maybe once a year or once every two years in normal times but we can see them happening far more frequently during a solar minimum than they happen otherwise. Now in 1859 there was an event called the Carrington event and this would give us some idea of what it would be like if one of these hit the earth. Because what happens when it hits the earth is that the earth's magnetic field automatically defends us against this um, solar particles and the field itself strengthens, it also moves and then when the particles go away it weakens. Well anyone who knows anything about electricity knows that a field that fluctuates in strength is exactly the same as a moving magnetic field. So it generates electricity and so much electricity was generated that in some places the telegraph lines, and the telegraph had only just really been invented, the telegraph lines began to melt and the operator equipment in the telephone shacks caught fire and there were other effects like iron railings obviously they became too hot to actually hold uh, same goes with barbed wire fences and everything else that you can think of that's long and metal heated up or melted depending on what it was. Now this obviously was before the event of world, worldwide electrical distribution before satellites and so on what a havoc this would wreak in the modern world who knows and it doesn't really bear thinking about. Now the Carrington event has not happened since it was a really major solar flare, but what I'm saying is that potentially during the solar minimum we're likely to see events that are at least the same size as the Carrington event, maybe larger. And these are likely to take the electricity grid down, disrupt if not destroy mm -hmm. communications equipment and generally be a complete nuisance. There will however be a very pretty light show um, since the aurora borealis will be visible uh, during such an event at very low latitudes. Normally it's only really visible from the north, however you'll be able to see it over most of the planet if one of these occurs. It's worthwhile also remembering that these flares come in two components. It's perfectly possible for us to see the light and experience the radiation from one of these flares which travel at the speed of light. 
and um, be affected by those particular things. I mean, obviously, the sun produces x-rays, the sun also produces light, um, it produces radio waves, so we'll get hit by all of those almost immediately, but it'll be two or three days before a coronal mass ejection, which travels much slower, would actually hit the Earth. And in order for it to hit the Earth, it actually has to be facing away from us, which is a strange thing, but in actual fact, the um, particles kind of make a spiral effect around the sun. So if it's pointed directly at us, we're safe. <laughs> It's good to think of the sun as being like a drunken man spinning round in the middle of a room full of people and firing the trigger of a shotgun that he's holding completely at random. Um, that effectively is what goes on. And we've been very, very lucky recently. There have been a few major flares in the last few years and we've been lucky that they've been facing in such a direction that the Earth has not actually been hit at least two of those flares if they were to hit would have caused Carrington type events um, but with the frequency of such flares going up during the solar minimum I can see that Carrington type event is probably going to happen during that time but who knows maybe we'll be so busy with all the other effects of the new ice age that we won't really be worried about it <laughs> anyway, I hope you like and enjoy this, and if you do, please like, share and subscribe, and I'm going to carry on playing this nice NASA movie of the sun for you. I'll see you all soon. Bye.